So here's some brain hacks, and these are the primary tools you can use to control your own brain. All right. So this is how to program your own brain on a on a regular basis. It's not something you do once. It's something you do every day as a system to reprogram your brain from wherever you don't want it to be to wherever you'd like it to be. Let's talk about hacking your brain. So here's the fun part I was waiting for the end. So yesterday I did a video on how to be happy. I talked about the things you can do with your lifestyle and habits to boost the chemicals in your body that make you happy. So that I posted that in, uh, I, I stripped out just the part about the happiness equation, and I pinned that to my Twitter feed. So if you want to send that around or, or see it again, it'll sit at the top of my Twitter feed, and it's also going to be on my blog. So I took out just the happiness part, so you can see that alone. Uh, but I wanted to expand on that with some... Uh, some lessons on how to hack your own brain to be happier. Now, as most of you know, I'm a trained hypnotist, and I've been working on uh, you know, learning persuasion for decades. And there are things that hypnotists uh, understand about how to program a brain that most of you don't. And secondly, you don't understand that you can program your own brain so you can be your own hypnotist without necessarily having all the skills of a hypnotist because it's fairly simple. Let me walk you through it. Um, so here's some brain hacks, and these are the primary tools you can use to control your own brain. All right. So this is how to program your own brain on a, on a regular basis. It's not something you do once. It's something you do every day as a system to reprogram your brain from wherever you don't want it to be to wherever you'd like it to be. And here are the tools. First of all, you want to manage your mental shelf space. And what that means is your brain can only handle so much. So be the only person who determines what's on your shelf, the stuff you're thinking about. If you have negative feelings, crowd them out with more powerful feelings that are the kinds you want. If, if, you're, if you keep remembering something that's making you unhappy and you're just going through your day and this memory keeps popping up, think of a sexual fantasy. Think of something great that's coming up. Just put your shelf um, in front of you and just fill it with thoughts that are more powerful than whatever it is you're trying to not think about. All right. So don't try to not think about it. Instead, move your thoughts to a different place. Fill all of your capacity with work, with social life, with you know, kids, whatever it is. Take on a hobby. Read a book. Just take your brain somewhere every time you've got something you need to get, get away from. I do say you should avoid things that you can't fix. All right? So thoughts you can't fix, just, just avoid them. Um, positive self-talk. This is sort of the Tony Robbins approach, but Tony Robbins, of course, gets this from a long history of uh, positive thinking people and hypnotists, and it has a, a long history of being useful. Tell yourself that things are going to go right and that you're good at things and you know how to figure stuff out. Even if you're not good at something, tell yourself you're the kind of person who can figure stuff out, because you are. If you got this far, you are the kind of person who can figure stuff out. So keep telling yourself that like it's a, like it's a program that's running in your head all the time. Um, I never turn that off. I tell myself all the time, I could do that. I could do that. I could do that. I could figure that out. That would be hard. I'd probably get hurt if I tried to do it, but I could do that. And I even take that into dangerous situations. If you have to be somewhere that's dangerous... You know, your first choice is don't go anywhere that's dangerous, right? So choice number one, do not put yourself in danger. But sometimes you just end up in a dangerous part of town, in a dangerous situation. Here's what I tell myself when I'm in a dangerous situation. Man, those other people are in trouble. I'd hate to be, I'd hate to be my enemy. I, I could kill everybody in this room. I'm the most dangerous person here. I'll bet they're worried about me. They have no idea what I'm, I'm, I'm up to. 
Also, if you get uh, challenged by here's here's a little bonus tip. Uh, every now and then, you'll get challenged by somebody dangerous, somebody who's looking for a fight. Maybe you're in a bad part of town, and they'll get in your face and they'll they'll start talking shit to you. If you want to scare them, don't talk. Just stay silent. Stay confident and silent, because you want them to get in their mind the idea that you're not a talker, and that whatever you planned might involve a weapon in your pocket. It might involve your, you know, that you've got a friend who's standing behind them. I like to look at people and and uh, and not give them any tip what I'm thinking. Just look at them, because it scares people. They need to see your reaction to know what they're dealing with. You know, any reaction gives them information. So I give them no information. People do not like having no information in a dangerous situation. I'm getting all the information I need because somebody's talking and acting and is telling me a lot about who they are and what they can do. I'm giving them nothing back because I don't want them to know anything. And that, that's very, it's very disturbing to be in a dangerous situation and to have a variable that you don't know anything about. <laughs> so just there's a little tip for you. Uh, habit. There's a book called Habit, uh, which I have on my shelf. Uh, the Power of Habit is the full title. The Power of Habit. Read it. It teaches you how to develop habits that become your programming. If you do something over and over again, it becomes part of your mental wiring. You can actually hack your brain into good habits simply through repetition. Yes, Charles Duhigg is the author, correct. Um, here's something that you're not going to believe. I promise it's true. You can change your preferences. Now, some of you are going to say, oh, yeah, I've already done that. So some of you will confirm it in, in some ways. What you don't know is how easy it is. It's really easy. You can change a lot of your preferences, maybe not all of them, but I have actually experimented with this. I've done long-term experiments to see if I could make myself really like something that I didn't like, and, and vice versa. I've programmed myself into liking things, and then just for fun, programmed myself out of it. It's amazingly easy, all right? And the main, uh, the main trick is association. So, for example, I used to not like the TV show um, American Idol a million years ago, but I watched it with uh, my then wife, and because I enjoyed the situation, I started loving the show. So I had a preference against the show, which turned into a, a great preference for the show, simply by associating the show with something else I liked a lot. This works every time. Just associate the thing you don't like with something you do that's more powerful until the thing you like bleeds over into the thing you weren't so crazy about and they become paired. Very easy. Um, I, I give the example of when I go to the gym, I always make sure that when I'm done, I go and I get a delicious uh, protein shake, which is you know good for me anyway, to have protein within 30 minutes of exercising. But... I like it. I like sitting down after I've exercised. I like having my protein shake, checking my phone, and just having some me time. <clears throat> it's some of my favorite time. Because of that, I make the process of exercising, which is not naturally fun, more enjoyable because I've associated it. You should take all the things you want to manage in your preferences and change their associations until you associate what you want with good things you already like. And that will, that will push you in that direction. It doesn't happen in one day, but it does happen in a few weeks. It's pretty, pretty fast. And if you do it for a year, it's, it's pretty locked in. Um, and triggers and association are, are related. The, the association is the trigger. So if you think about it, you can change your preference. All right. Um, somebody says they're lit off some indica. Well, you should not smoke indica. It's the morning, at least where I am. You should be in the sativa, my friend. The indica will make you sleepy all day. 
Um, affirmations. Affirmations are the process of repeating in your mind um, some objective that you want. Now, because I prefer systems over goals, people get confused and they say, wait, repeating the thing you want in your mind and visualizing it, isn't that like a goal without a system? To which I say, no, the system is the repeating it. Because the repeating it is what um, causes your brain to create filters that allow you to notice things and act upon things that maybe you wouldn't have noticed and wouldn't have acted upon. So using affirmations can help you program your your brain. Uh, um, Somebody says, Jack Herrera is your daytime friend for marijuana. Yeah, uh, that that one's... Well, I won't say anything about that right now. I think I might do a... I was thinking of doing a separate Periscope on how to smoke marijuana if you're a medical marijuana user, because I don't recommend it for recreational use. Someday I'll do that. Um, Avoidance. If you fill your shelf space and avoid unpleasant thoughts, they, they they will reduce in power through atrophy. So the avoidance is very similar or related to the shelf space. Just focus on the good stuff and the bad stuff will shrink in importance. And then I also uh, advise you to learn and increase your talent stack as much as you can over time because uh, that also programs your brain for recognizing connections. Um, I don't remember if I thought I was going to say this or actually said it when I was talking earlier, so I'll say it again. So you remember Watson and Crick um, figured out the shape of the double helix, you know, the, the DNA stuff. And it was Crick, who I learned just recently, had been a code breaker in World War II. So a guy who had two skills. One, he was a scientist. And two, he had been a code breaker. The code breaker broke the code on DNA. It took a code breaker. Now, if he had not been a code breaker by training, would his brain been to have been tuned? Uh, somebody says he was on LSD. That would have helped, too. Uh, would his brain have been tuned to the idea of patterns uh, in terms of codes? Probably not. So anytime you can learn a second thing it, that works well with your other thing, you, you, you've more than doubled your power. So learning two things gives you what you already had plus the new thing, but it doesn't just double your power because you have two things plus all the things that are new that are the overlap or the combination of some things from those two things. So adding a second skill does more than double. It's sort of like 250% better. And if you get that math right, it really helps. That's what the talent stack is all about. All right. Um, So repetition, thinking positive things, changing your preferences by association. These are the tools of a hypnotist, and they're the ones that you can easily apply to yourself. If you are not, if you are not um, managing your brain circuitry the way I've just suggested, you are sort of randomly going forth into the world. Because remember, your reality may or may not be entirely subjective. We don't need to, we don't need to uh, solve that today. But certainly your experience of your life is completely subjective. Right? There may be something out there that's just there, but your experience of life, for sure, is a subjective experience. And that subjective experience is very much within your power over time. Whatever you do on one day might not make that much difference, but if you develop habits over a long term, you learn to fill your shelf space with provocative ideas, you learn to build a talent stack so you can combine and and contrast ideas, and you build associations and triggers in your own mind that get you to where you want to be, and you've got affirmations that are running in the background all the time telling you what you want, you'll start noticing things you wouldn't have noticed before. 